Well, after a stressful and crazy holiday season, it's that time to share my top 10 favorite films of 2022. Now, this list is going to greatly differ from yours out there, so feel free down in the comments below, share your personal favorites. There are some films that I did not get a chance to see that I know would have made it on the list. That would be films like The Whale, The Fablemans, Avatar, The Way of Water, and Tar. I know those films probably would have made the top 10, but I did not get a chance to see them. So for the films I did see, starting with honorable mentions would be Scream, Sonic 2, Lost City, Marry Me, Northman, Gray Man, Adam Project, Where the Crawdads Sing, Black Adam, Day Shift, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, Wakanda Forever, Glass Onion, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, Starting the list at number 10 is Halloween Ends. This film is not for everyone, and it's not the epic showdown that I would say the previews advertise it to be. I still like Halloween H2O just a bit more, but I do like how it shows what evil and fear does to a town and a society. I like how it finally brings the saga of Laurie and Michael to a close. This is a very different Michael. Corey, did an amazing job in this film. Such an underrated character. Would have been better in a spinoff film rather than a conclusion film? Possibly, but I still love what they do. And it's a tragic tale. I really felt bad for this kid. And this film felt like a mix of Christine, The Lost Boys, with a mix of Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. I like what David Gordon Green did with this trilogy. And it was just nice to see a horror franchise actually just end. Sure, it might not have been the ending that we all picture in our heads, but I think this film is a little bit underrated. I think it gets more hate than it deserves. It's not the best Halloween film, but for some reason I keep going back to it and I'm like, you know what, I really enjoy this film more than a lot of other people out there. And I love what Jamie Lee Curtis has brought to the character of Laurie Strode and it's so great to see her conclude this after 40 years. It was made with a lot of love and harkened back to the original Carpenter classic in my eyes. After that, at number nine is Father Stew. Father Stew is based on a true story, and I have to say, I love the performances in this film. Mark Wahlberg gives a fantastic performance, seeing how this man was before he found God, seeing how he is at the beginning of the film to the end, seeing him deal with his condition that he has. It's just so heartbreaking, and knowing that a real person went through this is just not only kind of tragic in a way, but also just inspiring to see what he accomplished despite his detriment, you know? And I, I thought there was great performances. You know, the actress in this did a great job seeing the, the church congregation. There's a lot of great comedy there. Uh, Mel Gibson gives a fine performance as his father. It's not like those kind of cheesy televangelist movies you see from like the evangelical Christians, you know. It's, it's I like that they grounded this character. He's a very flawed, he's a human being, you know. It's not like a goody two-shoes perfect character at the beginning. But he loses his way before finding it again, before finding God and basically gaining faith and then spreading that faith and speaking to others, you know. And I like that story. I was brought to tears at the end of this movie. It was very emotional. And as a Catholic, it, this film really moved me, to say the least. And uh, I'm glad Mark Wahlberg made this type of film, you know. It got a lot of unnecessary hate, I thought. Just look at the Rotten Tomatoes score from the critics to audience. This was one of the more underrated films of the year, in my opinion. After that, at number eight is A Christmas Story Christmas. I absolutely love this film. A Christmas Story is a classic, but I'm glad that after My Summer Story and some of the other TV adaptations that we finally got a true sequel with the original cast, the majority of the original cast back. Seeing the same kid as an adult is just amazing. Seeing the other characters with his friends, seeing Scott Farkas back, Zach Ward does a fantastic job with the limited time he's given. It's a good old fashioned Christmas film that is funny, but also moving at the same time. And I love how it ties to the original and honors the father from the original film. This is just an awesome Christmas movie. One of the better Christmas films in a very long time. After that at number seven, is Orphan First Kill. 2022 has actually been a fantastic year for horror films. I was a huge fan of the first Orphan, and I thought Orphan First Kill is going to be kind of like a paint-by-numbers, uh, routine, generic prequel. I thought I knew where it was going, and then halfway through the film, there's a twist that actually rivals the first film's twist, in my opinion. I love Isabel Furman's performance in this. Julia Stiles is fantastic in this. Both actresses really own these characters and really make the film, in my opinion. Who could forget that maniac scene 
Orphan First Kill was a lot of fun for a horror movie and for a prequel film. After that, at number six is Prey, a Predator film that went back to basics and is probably the best film of that franchise since the Arnold Schwarzenegger original that John McTiernan directed. I absolutely enjoyed Prey from start to finish. It's even better when you watch it in the Comanche language and stuff. You know, um, it does look like closed captioning on Hulu. I really hope that Disney decides to release a 20th Century Fox Blu-ray or 4K to not only go with the other Predator films, but that we can get proper subtitles instead of like closed captioning. I love both versions of the film, the nods and ties to the original film, but just the brutality of it. This Predator is just ruthless. Amber Midthunder does an awesome job. She is a badass, kick-ass female heroine, and I absolutely love this movie. It's a perfect action film, and it doesn't try to expand on Predator and make it bigger than it's than it already was. It goes back to what made Predator special. After that, at number five is Ambulance. Ambulance, I've always been a Michael Bay fan. He's had some films that were kind of out there, maybe more action than story oriented, but I always really respected Michael Bay as a filmmaker. Visually, he, nobody does action like he does. Even with the Transformers movies, Pain and Gain, the Bad Boys films, The Rock and Armageddon being among my favorites, and The Island is an underrated film. It was great to see Ambulance kind of going back to like basic Michael Bay with a little bit of like drone footage. I loved how he filmed this one. But Aza Gonzalez in it, you know, Yaya Abdul Mateen II, Jake Gyllenhaal, these brothers robbing, taking a uh, ambulance paramedic hostage and just going on a chase. It's like speed with an ambulance. And at first I'm like, how are they going to like make this a two hour movie? They can get caught. How are they going to do it? Well, it doesn't start off that way. It builds up to the ambulance being taken and then the rest is the chase and then there's more to it. And this was an awesome movie that was a throwback to like the good old fashioned action movies of the 90s that not only had the spectacle, but the stories and characters to it. I absolutely love this film. I mean, I've loved Eddie Gonzalez since From Dust Till Dawn when she was in Tanico Pandemonium. So it's kind of cool seeing her and Jesse Garcia, Ranger Gonzalez from that show in this film. But Jake Gyllenhaal, yeah. I mean, this is just a good cast. Great story. And the action is just leaves you on the edge of your seat. Your heart rate is filled with adrenaline from start to finish. After that, at number four is The Batman. There was a lot of comic book movies this year, but The Batman was the only one I think was worthy of a top 10. It felt like a detective neo-noir story. Robert Pattinson really knocked it out of the park. Kind of reminded me a bit of Michael Keaton and Bell put together with a little bit of like Affleck. I loved how people were like, but Ben Affleck's too dark. He doubled down. He's like, what are you? It's like, I'm vengeance, you know? I love his character, Zoe Kravitz in this. Colin Farrell is nearly unrecognizable as a penguin. The makeup department should get a nomination for an Academy Award. Um, Matt Reeves did a fantastic job with this. I loved his uh, Play of the Apes films, and this was no exception, grounding it and giving this like detective-driven story. Um, I love that scene with like El Rada Alada. It's like, eh, no habla espanol? Am I the only one that knows the difference between L and law? You know, Jeffrey Wright is Commissioner Gordon. Paul Dano plays a very scary, kind of creepy Edward Nigma Riddler, or should I say Edward Nashton. This went back to the roots of Batman while also reinventing it in a new way. And I actually love it when they have a cool trailer song and it's actually in the film with Something in the Way by Nirvana. After that is Nope. Nope is a film that I absolutely love and I love to get out in us, but this might, in my opinion, might be my favorite Jordan Peele film yet. It reminded me a lot of signs mixed with like Day the Earth is Still, War of the Worlds. Seeing Dale Kalua here, Kiki Palmer is fantastic in this. This is a great cast. The less you know about this movie, the better it is, in my opinion. And there's some creepy, eerie scenes. I love the use of IMAX cameras. This is definitely one of my favorite films of the year. Unfortunately, I did not get to see it at cinemas, but I saw it when it arrived on Peacock and I enjoyed it nevertheless. It's a great film to like turn off the lights, watch in the dark and see. And it's definitely one of the best films of the year that's not only different, but it's a well-made like horror sci-fi film. After that, at number two is Elvis. I enjoyed Baz Luhrmann's Elvis. Austin Butler, along with Brendan Fraser in the Well, I think should be nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actor. Tom Hanks, yeah, he was a creepy kind of carny guy as a colonel. Was it the most authentic accent to the real colonel? Not really. Did they have all the Elvis songs? No. They infused modern music, which I can see could be a turnoff to some people. 
And at times it was for me, but I enjoyed it. It was like watching a Broadway play or a production. And seeing this in the cinema really was an experience. And it's tragic seeing the life of Elvis, but also you forget how special he was, you know? You I mean, you hear about Elvis, you know, because people liked him that he was the king. But when you see this film, you understand why he was so damn special. You start to see the talent. You start to appreciate the man behind the music more seeing this film. And I love what this uh, film did. If I Could Dream Scene, the recreations, uh, Unchained Melody, by the time it hits that ending, everything just clicks in all cylinders and it just moves you. And the, the way they transition from the historical archive footage to Austin Butler is nothing short of phenomenal. This is definitely one of my favorite, most moving films of the year. And yeah, what can I say? I'm not usually into musicals or anything. I listen to Elvis, but I'm not like like a hardcore fan. I mean, I listen to some of his music. I'm aware of his gospel music, but like this film, it really kind of reminds you how special he was, you know, as a talent and what he did for the music industry and the influences he had on his music. I like that this film explored that. As far as Elvis adaptations, it's probably my favorite the Jonathan Rice Myers one on CBS and the Kurt Russell John Carpenter directed one from the 70s. Is there any doubt my favorite film is Top Gun Maverick? No other film has come close to the feeling of this film. There are parts of the romance and stuff that I think are better in the first Top Gun, but everything else is elevated and Joseph Kaczynski is one of my favorite filmmakers. I loved his work in Oblivion and one of my personal favorites is Tron Legacy. Like that's like one of my favorite films of the past 10 years. Seeing him do this, it, I knew it was going to be an awesome film all the way from Danger Zone to Lady Gaga's music and the action in between shot for real with real jet flying on IMAX. And this film rides right into the Danger Zone while also giving us more emotion. We start to see the consequences of Maverick's decisions in the first movie. We start to see the tragedy of what happened to Goose and the repercussions it has with his son, R Rooster, here. We also get a great scene between Val Kilmer and Tom Cruise that's not really acting. It felt real. Like, that was real. And that was the most raw piece of acting I've seen this year in the cinema that just moved me. And I was just, like, almost filled with tears. The score by Lauren Balfi and Hans Zimmer is just awesome. Glenn Powell's Hangman, Monica Barbaro's Phoenix, Danny Ramirez. There's so many, like, the whole cast is just awesome. This movie just was not only a good sequel and a legacy sequel, but it was just a damn good film, period. You, you could watch this without watching the first Top Gun. It was like Tom Cruise's Color of Money, you know? Now, The Hustler was made, and then there's Color of Money. This is Top Gun, and this is like Top Gun Maverick. It's that type of legacy sequel. And what can I say? This film just put a smile on my face and reminded you what movie magic is all about. Anyway, those are my top 10 favorite films of 2022. Uh, at least the ones I've seen so far. There's some that are not on the list that I know are, that are probably going to be in my top 10 after I see them. And there are others that I know that are not on this list that are on your list out there. Again, this is not what I consider the top 10 best, but just my favorites. So feel free, share your top 10 favorite films of 2022 down in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, everyone. Feel free to like, subscribe if you want to see more content, and check out these other videos. In the meantime, I hope you all stay safe and healthy out there. I'm thankful for each and every one of you out there watching, returning and new subscribers and just audience members. Thank you for watching. Um, it's been a crazy year. It's been a crazy couple of years. I can't believe it's going to be 2023. I'm still trying to process 2020 in many ways. But um, until then, I hope you all have a happy new year, and I'll see you all in 2023. Till next time.